Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be covering Robin Image Optimizer by Webcrafting. The last video I did by, on Clarify, I really was against the plugin because its user interface was too complicated, there were too many options, a lot of them were rather pointless, and it was just really hard to use in any meaningful way. However, this is a plugin that I highly recommend, especially in comparison to something like Smush and I'm gonna be explaining why. So Robin Image Optimizer is just like WP Smush, which is unlike you Image Optimizer. If you're on somebody like WP Engine, for instance, as your host, they're quite restrictive on what you're allowed to do on their servers. Unlike other hosts, SiteGround, Cloudways, GoDaddy, they all are pretty lenient on what you're allowed to do. But WP Engine, Keensta, the bigger, the more optimized managed hosts, are very restrictive in the plugins you can install. UImage Optimizer is not allowed to be installed on their servers because it uses a lot of CPU to compress images on server. That's when you're gonna to wanna to use something like WP Smush. WP Smush's advantages and actually uploads the image to their server, they handle the compression, and then your server just re-downloads it to override it. However, WP Smush, at least the free version, has two things that make it obnoxious to use. Number one, it does not compress the full-sized image that you upload. The problem with that is, is WordPress images tend to be used in the easiest way. You upload a big image, you're going to add that full-size image to your blog post, or you upload that full-size image and that's going to be your logo. So all those images will never get compressed and oftentimes users don't pre-compress images on upload. That leads to unwanted bytes. The other thing that's obnoxious is, is if you have a really large and existing website, at least without a workaround, you can't automatically bulk compress all of them. You have to sit there and click it every 50 images. And they do that because they want you to buy the pro version, which is fair. They are paying, and they're basically giving you the service for free to compress your images for free. But if you don't want to pay for it, you're not going to be paying for it, and you're just going to find an alternative. And that is where this plugin comes in. This plugin is very good and very effective. We are going to be looking at it. I'm going to explain what options you need to use and why you should be using it. So when you first get it, you're going to be given this bulk optimization screen. We're going to touch on this a little bit later. I only uploaded a single image to test because I want to go to the settings page first. So. When you install it, you have the optimization server. There are three servers that you get in the free version, and in the pro version, which you pay for, you get four servers. The first option is it will limit the image upload size to five megabytes. On server two, though, you get poor compression. It will only do lossless, and the largest image that is uploaded can be one megabyte in size. And then the third one is poor compression because you can't use it on localhost. And that is because there's probably some kind of restriction. So if you have a locally hosted website, you cannot use this. So normally server one is the best thing to go for. And if you have the paid version, go ahead and use the premium server. It is also good, but we're not talking about the pro version. So the compression mode is what actually allows you to modify how your images get compressed. A lossless compression removes metadata. This will not affect the image quality. It will reduce the file size by stripping out EXIF data and other data. And this is the option to keep that data. We want that off. And this is great because it allows you to keep that crisp image quality without any chance of it getting worse in visible quality. You have the lossy option. Lossy compression will compress the images, but it tries to not do it so much that it becomes a visual annoyance to users. The file size will be reduced, and it may have a small degradation in image quality, but in most cases you won't see it. So if you want to get a really good solid re file reduction size, you are going to want to go with this option. Then there's the high compression option. This will reduce the file size dramatically, however, there no normally is noticeable difference in image quality to the point that it's a detriment to your visitors. So I don't really ever recommend using the high version, especially if you're gonna be using a, the bulk optimizer. Typically lossless is what I use because most of the time users don't want their images to be any different than they are. 
especially if you're working with photographers. So lossless is typically the way to go. If you wanna have lossy compression, you can try it. Just make sure you have this backup images option turned on. So we go to the lossless option, and then we have the auto optimization on upload. What this does is you upload the image to your website in the media.php section, and it will go ahead and compress it for you automatically. Almost every image optimization plugin has this by default. So typically go ahead and enable it. Backup images, this is a good option. What's great is you have an option to delete and clear the backup or to restore them from right here. Since this is a staging site, I'm gonna turn this option off, but you should keep it on for your live site and let, until you can verify, hey, these images look fine and I have nothing to worry about. The error log should be disabled unless you have a specific issue that you're running into. And the pro version, you can also set up WebP images. We will not be doing that because we're not using the free version. You can then remove EXIF data. This is data that's typically applied by the camera or even a ed on editing software. This just includes the shutter speed, exposure, compensation, as it says, sometimes GPS coordinates, and sometimes even the camera type and the make or even info about the lens if it's baked in. You get a lot of weird data that's thrown in there. If you've ever taken a photo with your phone, you'll notice that you get a lot of weird data that's included. But I strip it because even though there might be a SEO impact, and this is a little bit, this is a little interesting. EXIF data is apparently indexed according to some users. However, EXIF data is really, it's only applicable to Google image search and nobody really cares. Nobody, I've never found somebody who's found a website really through Google image search unless they were a image heavy website. EXIF data is really something you have to decide and consult with your SEO professional, and it depends on your strategy. Um, but if we're talking about just strictly from a performance perspective, no, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and strip it to reduce the file size. You could choose to resize large images. I need to say something about this option because a lot of people use these options incorrectly. What this does is what it, it takes your original image. So let's say I have a large image of 1920 by 1080 and I set the width to be 1600. So the 1920 will now be resized down to 1600 in width. That is only applicable to the full size image. So if you upload the image to your website and let's just say you have a 1000 pixel width image and you set the maximum width to 800 pixels and then you run GT matrix, but then you still get the warning for serving scaled images because the image container is 200 pixels. This option will not fix it for you. These options are strictly about file size. I actually use this on my, one of my websites that I work on for myself is daily driver tips. And I have all the images that I upload down to 1920 as the width. And the reason I do that is because that's the file size that I want to work with, but media images that you get from car companies tend to be around four to 5K in resolution because they're taken on professional cameras. So I have to have a way to resize them without doing it in Photoshop and wasting my time. And that's what this option is meant for. I'm turning it off because most people shouldn't do that because they're gonna be really annoyed when their images look bad. We want all their thumbnails to be optimized though. So that all the images will get compressed. And then you have the scheduled optimization. Basically what this does is it'll automatically compress your images on a schedule. You can choose the interval from which it runs. I never suggest doing it once every minute or every two minutes. I would even say not even every 10 minutes. Every 30 minutes is probably what you really need. And then the images per iteration. Now the images per iteration is how many images actually get compressed in the time period of which you're running the schedule. For most websites, you're not publishing three images every 50 minutes, and we already have the option to automatically compress them. But let's say we had this option disabled. What you wanna do is you wanna figure out about how many images you're uploading every hour. Let's say you upload 10 images an hour. Well, if we have it on the 30 minute interval, we're gonna want it to be five images. So every hour, 10 of those 10 images will be compressed five times uh, over two intervals, and five of them are compressed each time. So just keep this in mind. For most people, just go ahead and set it to the 30 minutes and leave it at the three. You're not updating your website enough for that to be an issue. And even if you are, auto optimization on upload is your friend. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to save this. We're going to hop over to the bulk op optimize section. I have one image that I uploaded. I stole it off of Pexels, which is a free 
stock photo website. Stole wasn't the good word, but it sounded pretty enticing. So you're gonna go ahead and click the run button. What this will do is it'll say, you wanna start the optimization without a backup. If you enabled the backup, like I suggested for your live site back there, you will not have this warning. You're gonna click okay. And then you could choose to know if you wanna use scheduled optimization. We're gonna click optimize now. What's gonna happen is it's now going to start the process. The one image remains, it's going to get that image. The image will be downloaded from the server that's doing the compression. The server is going to compress the image and then my server is going to re-download that image. So my image was optimized. Because I did a non-lossy compression, so this is lossless, it shaved 8% of the file size off. It was 881 kilobytes originally, but now it is 811 kilobytes. We're just gonna go ahead and um, re-upload that same image, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you what happens when you use the higher levels of compression. So I'm gonna disable this option for the sake of demonstration. I'm gonna re-upload this image and we're going to now do the lossy compression. And I'm gonna upload it again one more time to show you the high level of compression to show you the differences that you're going to have. Now we're gonna come back to Robin Image Optimizer and we're gonna come back to this setting and we're gonna set it to lossy. We're gonna now go to bulk optimize and now it says 50% of my images have been optimized. This right here is total images. So it's the data from all your images, not just the one that you're upload, uh, not just the one from each run cycle. But this data is the total savings and we're going to look at that. So it's running the compression again, downloading the image, it's gonna be compressing it, it's gonna be doing a lossy compression. It also will tell you if the, the, the thumbnails have been compressed. I'm gonna give it a minute. Now the original file size for this one, a little bit weird because it was the exact same image, was 877 kilobytes. The current size though after is now 652 kilobytes and we're gonna up, uh, open both these images. This is my lossless compression. This is my lossy compression. Unless you really zoom in or pay really close attention, that is not all that different. But now we get to do the fun one, which is the high compression. The high compression is where I'm expecting there to be artifacts. When people optimize images and they refer to artifacts, it's when you see almost like a break in the image where there are weird shapes that start to form because the compression algorithm is trying to, really it's just compressing it too much. So things get messed up, colors start getting weird, shapes start getting distorted. You'll notice jagged lines. We don't need to keep talking about it. We're just gonna run it again. And then we're going to add this to our third tab. We're gonna go ahead and run it. If we're lucky, this will just resize it, compress it, uh, resize it, it'll just compress it, and we should not see any difference in visual quality. I don't feel like we're gonna be that lucky though, because while this image isn't too complicated, that is a very large file size reduction. So we come over here, and what do we see? We see an image looking at me. We're not noticing too bad, if you're looking right here, you're gonna notice the jagged lines along here, so they're much smoother. And this area is starting to get faded. It almost looks like the entire image is a bit faded. Here, let's just paste and go. It, it's a little bit faded, and on my screen, you can see where the image is starting to get distorted, especially where the lighting is taking effect. You don't see any of that here. Let me just paste it over here and I'll show you. If you zoom in, you'll see right here, this white area looks totally normal. And this was the lossy compression, but under the high compression, you can kind of see where there's lines being distorted. But over here, it's a lot cleaner. It, it just looks a little bit worse is the only way to put it. However, we managed to reduce the file size by 60%. And those are very unnoticeable differences <laughs> at least until you zoom very far in because this is a very large image. So you just have to test it. Um, for a 1920 by 2560 image, getting it down by 60% and it still being acceptable, you would never want, you probably wouldn't want this for a photography website, but for an editorial or a blog, for a free image compression, this is really solid. You won't get compression ratios like this probably out of any other free plugin. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. 
Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.